Here we are going to look at two examples where we have to use the order of operations to simplify our expressions with decimals. Let's take a look at the problem on the left. So let's split our workspace in half and we'll start with the problem on the left. I see I have 2.9 minus 5 plus 2.6. So my only two operations are addition and subtraction. So according to the order of operations, I just work these, uh, these operations from left to right. So the first operation I see is 2.9 minus 5. So I'm going to do the subtraction first. Now, 2.9 is smaller than 5. So if I'm doing 2.9 and I'm trying to subtract 5, I should understand that I'm going to end up with a negative number because 2.9 is smaller than 5. So really what I'm doing, I'm going to start a little box down here at the bottom where I do some side work. Um, if I want to do 2.9 minus 5, I really need to take the number 5, which is going to be written as 5.0, and I need to subtract 2.9. Now that will give me a positive value, but then when I go back up to my problem, that value will be negative because I started with 2.9, which is a smaller number, and I was trying to subtract 5. So I have to borrow from the 5, so 10 minus 9 gives me 1, and 4 minus 2 gives me 2, so 2.1. But remember, since it was 2.9 minus the number 5, it's actually negative 2.1. So now I have negative 2.1 plus 2.6. So I like to think of this in terms of money. Negative 2.1 to me means I have negative $2.10, or I'm in the hole $2.10, or think of it like you owe somebody $2.10, and then say you gain $2.60. Well, you have to give away $2.10 to the person that you owed it to, and then you would be left with $0.50 cents or $0.5. Um, another way to think about this, so we're going to do negative 2.1 plus 2.6. Another way to think about it is to rewrite it as 2.6 plus negative 2.1. Those are equivalent expressions, and then really all you're doing is the number 2.6 minus the number 2.1, which gives you positive 0.5, because 2.6 is larger than 2.1. So if you have positive 2.6 and you're adding negative 2.1, you're still in positive values for your final answer. Okay, let's look at the problem on the right. Negative 7.9 minus negative 8.6 plus 2.6. So the only operations here are subtraction and addition, so I'm going to work them from left to right, like order of operations tells me to. So first I'm going to do negative 7.9 minus negative 8.6. Now, since we're minusing a negative number, that becomes negative 7.9 plus 8.6 plus 2.6. So when I work from left to right, I'm going to start by doing negative 7.9 plus 8.6. So again, I'm going to make a little box at the bottom to do my scratch work. I can start thinking of this as money. Negative 7.9 means you owe somebody $7.90. And then let's say all of a sudden you come across $8.60. Well, you've got to pay the person you owe the $7.90. You'd have $0.70 cents left. Um, here's another way to think about it. You could think about that as positive 8.6 minus 7.9. So you'd have to borrow from the 8. And 16 minus 9 is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0, so you'd get 0 0.7. And it would be positive because it's negative 7.9, but you're adding 8.6. So that's enough to get you into the positive values. Um, and the thing that we sometimes say is take the sign of the bigger number. Um, well, 8.6 would be the bigger number, and since 8.6 is positive, this would become positive 0 0.7, and now I'm just adding that to 2.6. So it's like 70 cents plus $2.60, you'd have $3.30. So our final answer is 3.3 because both numbers were positive, 0 0.7 and plus 2.6.